Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I rise to talk about an issue that the Senate may address on the floor this week. Uh, tomorrow, we start in the Senate Finance Committee. We're going to take up the renegotiated North American Free Trade Agreement. Uh, one of my proudest votes as a member of the House a long time ago was to vote against the North American Free Trade Agreement, to vote against NAFTA. I voted no on every trade agreement since then because every trade agreement that's come in front of this body was written by corporations for, was written by corporate interest for their corporate executives and stockholders. They maximize profits always, every one of these trade agreements, CAFTA, NAFTA, PNTR with China, not technically a trade agreement, but it quacks like a duck and walks like a duck. Uh, and uh, the, the trade agreements with Peru, every one of these trade agreements, every case, has looked out for corporate interests and jettisoned the interests of workers. We see the consequences. Corporate profits soar every time. Executive compensation explodes upward every time. Workers continue to produce more than ever before, but even though corporate profits are up, executive compensation's up, workers' wages have been flat, so often they can't join a union and the middle class continues to shrink. I know what that's meant in the presiding officer state of Arkansas. I know what it's meant in Ohio. I know what it's done to my hometown of Mansfield. I know what these trade agreements do to Dayton and Cleveland and Cincinnati and Canton and Youngstown and Toledo. Then President Trump, candidate Trump, said he was going to renegotiate NAFTA. Well, he, that was his promise. He did. But he gave us the same thing. His economic policies overall had been that, but his renegotiated NAFTA that he brought to this Congress originally, the negotiation that, that, that he made with Mexico and Canada, was another corporate trade agreement written for corporate interests. Uh, again, the, this president, he betrays workers from his tax giveaways to corporations to his judges that put their thumbs on the scale, choosing corporations over workers, choosing choosing. Wall Street over consumers. And then last year, as he's done one betrayal of workers after another, squeezing the middle class even more, last year, when we got an initial draft of this agreement from the administration, the renegotiated NAFTA, it was another betrayal. His first NAFTA draft was nowhere near the good deal for workers that President Trump promised he'd negotiated fundamentally, he had negotiated another corporate trade deal, a deal that helps corporate executives, that helps stockholders, that betray workers. Again and again, another trade deal just like that. It meant nothing for workers, it meant a sellout to drug companies. It took, took us months of fighting alongside Speaker Pelosi and Senator Wyden and trade unions to improve this deal and take the real and the important steps towards putting workers at the center of our trade policies. These, these trade policies should be written for workers so it expands their, it increases their income and expands the middle class, not written for corporations and trickle down economics. And we know, we know, Mr. President, that's what happens on every tax bill that comes in front of this Congress, written by the administration and Senator McConnell. We know it's the same thing. Instead of building the economy from the middle out, instead of building the economy from the middle out so the middle class grows and America over, overwhelmingly prospers, just like the tax cuts, the tax cuts for the rich that may, they tell us, trickle down and help the middle class. That's the way his trade agreement was written. That's the way these tax bills in this Congress are written. So it took months of us fighting alongside Senator, Senator Wyden and, and organized labor and Speaker Pelosi. We now have a provision in the labor chapter, and the president finally agreed to this provision. He knew he wasn't going to get a renegotiated NAFTA unless he, unless he followed what we said on workers. For the first time, we have a provision in the labor chapter, Mr. Mr. Speaker, for instance, that says violence against workers is always a violation agreement. The, the, the language that the president gave us said, well, the first time you commit violence against workers, we might fine you. The second time, we might fine you. Only if you do it over and over and over is it a violation. I mean, really, if, you, if there's violence against workers, the people that committed that violence ought to pay for it. So uh, we know that we've, we've fixed that in this. Um, the, the, we've improved some of the legalese that since the beginning has been included in trade agreements to make it 
nearly impossible to successfully win a case when a country violates its labor commitments. We secured our brown widen provision that amounts to the strongest ever, by far, strongest ever labor enforcement in U.S. trade deal. This provision that Senator Wyden and I wrote and fought for is the first improvement to enforcing the labor standards in our trade agreements since we've been negotiating them. We know why companies close factories in Ohio and open them in Mexico. They can pay lower wages. They can take advantage of workers who don't have rights. They can keep unions from organizing. American workers can't compete with that kind of low wage, lack of enforcement and labor laws. And what happens? There's a race to the bottom on wages. So if, if a company threatens to move to Mexico, and they say, they tell their workforce, you know, we're going to move unless you do some wage givebacks. What's that do? It, they either move and the American workers lose their jobs, or they use that as a doubt to put downward pressure on wages for the American workers. And I know what that's done to Mansfield, Ohio. I know what it's done to Gallup Police and Chillicothe and Zanesville and, and, and Dayton and Huber Heights and every other community. The only way to stop this is by raising labor standards in every country we trade with and, most importantly, to make sure those standards are actually enforced. If corporations are forced to pay workers a living wage and treat them with dignity, no matter where the workers are, we take away the incentive for those companies to move jobs abroad. That's what the brown widen provisions does. A worker in Mexico now, under this agreement, and the reason I'm supporting this, my first ever trade agreement that I'm supporting, worker in Mexico will be able to report a company violating their rights. They can actually call a toll-free number reporting violations against the, against the workers. A worker can actually make that request. They've never had that right in Mexico. They often enough don't have it here. We can then determine whether worker rights have been violated and then take action against the company that did it. We've never done it that way. We haven't had good results as a result, as a result from, because of that. We can apply punitive damages when comp companies stop workers from organizing, and if they keep doing it, we stop their goods from coming into the United States. You enforce it at the factory level by saying, if you keep doing this, if you keep violating this trade agreement, you're not sending your products into the United States. That will make them behave. When Mexican workers have the power to form real unions and negotiate for higher wages, it helps our workers. Right now, Mexican workers can be paid as little as $6.50, not an hour, but a day. We've been asking American workers to compete with that. We've already heard some critics say Brown Wyden will force Mexican wages to rise. I plead guilty. That's the entire point. To take away the incentive, if Mexican wages go up, it makes U.S. companies less likely to shut down production in 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 Steubenville or in Lisbon or in, in Bryan and move overseas. It takes away the incentive for those companies to relocate. I want to be clear, I'm always going to be straight with American workers. This is not a perfect agreement. One trade deal that Democrats fixed will not do undo the rest of Trump's economic policies that put corporations over workers. This deal won't stop outsourcing when we have President Trump, Trump's tax plan that gives companies a tax break to send jobs to American jobs to Mexico. And here's how the president's tax bill that was rammed through this Senate um, a year or so ago works, that if you're, if you're in Springfield, Ohio, your corporate tax rate is 21%. If you move, pull up stakes and move to Mexico or anywhere else, your tax rate's 10.5%. That's the Trump corporate tax policy. So even with this better trade agreement, we're not going to stop that kind of outsourcing because of the president's insistence on helping his corporate buddies. I will keep fighting his corporate trade policies and tax policies just like we did with this agreement. We have a lot more work to do, um, Mr. President, to make our trade agreements more pro-worker. I will vote yes, as I said, for the first time ever on a trade agreement because by including Brown, Wyden, Democrats have made this agreement much more pro-worker. We set an important precedent for the future that Brown, Wyden must now be included in every trade agreement in the years ahead.